I'm going to beat Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu using only shiny Pokemon. The Pokemon fandom usually calls this a badge quest, however, things got a little complicated when doing this video. So let me explain the rules of this challenge. I need to beat the game with six unique shiny Pokemon in my party, as long as I don't use the shiny charm. This video took a long time to make, so consider subscribing if you haven't already, and let's just jump into it. After completing the typical introduction, I went to go get the first shiny Pokemon for my team, and the location I chose was easily Viridian Forest, one of the best locations in the game to shiny hunt because of the instrumental amount of spawns. I began to catch combo Caterpies so I could attain a shiny Caterpie for the team, and you'd think that I would go for Bulbasaur because it is a special spawn, but ultimately, this popped up. Even though I was catch comboing Caterpie, I somehow managed to get a shiny Metapod to spawn. I guess it does make my job a little bit easier. I got the Metapod and I can just evolve it into the Butterfree, but the only problem with getting a Metapod as the shiny is that it learns no moves until I evolve it into a Butterfree, so I gotta spend even more time in this forest catch comboing. Luckily, this Metapod actually came in like five minutes after I used Allure, which I don't know how lucky that is, but I'm pretty sure I get luckier down the road in this challenge. Oh yeah, I named it Lucky by the way, because Pretty understandable, actually. With my new shiny Butterfree, I made my way to Pewter City to finally challenge the Rock-type gym leader, Brock. Now, if I got Bulbasaur, this wouldn't have been a big deal, but with Butterfree, yeah, I couldn't win at level 10. <laughs> a few levels later, Butterfree managed to learn Sleep Powder, which, honestly, was the key savior to beating Brock. I simply just put his Pokemon to sleep. They didn't attack, so I just kept on attacking, and eventually, I won. Pretty easy. After getting the boulder badge, it was time for the next shiny hunt, and I honestly had no idea what to go for. A lot of the Pokemon seemed like pretty good options, but weak against Misty, or Pokemon I really just didn't want to use like Pidgey, it overlaps with Butterfree. I decided to go with Sandshrew because it's one of the cutest Pokemon ever, and its shiny is a nice mint green, and I really like Sand Slash, so I started catch comboing Sandshrew. And then it became a waiting game until the next hour when this happened. Even though Sanctuary was my chain Pokemon, Rattata spawned Shiny, which I wasn't really thrilled about. I already had a Pokemon that would be on my final team that doesn't have the greatest base stat total in Butterfree, and Raticate is not really that great of a Pokemon, so honestly, really underwhelming. But I named it Olive because, I don't know, it sounded cute. I began to make my way through Mount Moon, and I tried to gain Olive a couple of levels because it was really falling behind Lucky, who was practically level 20 before even getting out of Mount Moon because it was the only Pokemon I was using before Olive came along, and I was managed to make it to Cerulean City. Now, there's a pretty big problem when I face during this playthrough in that my team, even at the final stage of the game, which you'll see at the end of the video, they were never really that balanced very well. There was duplicate typings, duplicate movesets, and Pokemon were really struggling, especially halfway through the game. So when facing a gym leader like Misty, with a Butterfree and a Rattata, you can imagine I was struggling a little bit. I immediately went to go face my rival, which I completely forgot to mention is named Time, because Time is truly the enemy of this challenge, and gained my Pokemon a couple levels. I freed Bill, then went to go fight Misty and her Pokemon trainers in her gym. I dropped a save, confident that I'm actually going to lose this fight because my Pokemon are not very strong and pretty weak species themselves, but however, I actually managed to pull through and defeat her Psyduck and Starmie. I very much relied on Sleep Powder. I got my second badge, then made my way to Vermilion City for my next shiny Pokemon. Now, if you know anything about the Kanto games, this section and so on has a bunch of really great opportunities to catch Pokemon, especially shiny Pokemon. But which Pokemon would I have on my team and which one stood out to me the most? I could either make my way forward to higher leveled Pokemon, however, doing that means that I'm only really allowed to use Pokeballs and Great Balls and using normal lures suck. I haven't mentioned this yet, but just the normal lure that you get at the beginning of the game really is so bad. You only get like 50 steps. But after after a while, I knew the perfect Pokemon to catch combo, Growlithe. I love fire types, but not only that, you can actually ride Arcanine in this game, and the thought of having a shiny Arcanine ride Pokemon was just really too cool to pass up. However, I did not expect this. I somehow managed to get a shiny Growlithe at only a 23 catch combo. This is extremely rare, and I cannot believe that the first three shinies of my six shiny Pokemon team have all been extremely easy to get. 
Before I named my new shiny, Olive evolved into shiny Raticate, which is a good shiny, I don't mind it, I like the darker tones of red. After seeing my yellow dog in the overworld, I named it Russell, and then continued comboing because Russell was extremely low leveled compared to the rest of the team. So if you remember early on in the video, I mentioned that this playthrough got a little complicated because originally this was intended to be a badge quest. I have three shiny Pokemon right before my third badge. However, I still had a combo for Growlithe and instead of just waiting for the next shiny Pokemon, I didn't want to just catch Pokemon all over again and waste Pokeballs because money was also a struggle here. So I, I continued shiny hunting on the route with Mr. Mime and this did not go well. So if you have a 31 catch combo, you should probably know that that's the best shiny odds to get a shiny Pokemon. However, if you go even above a 31 catch combo on the same chained Pokemon, you have an increased odds of finding a shiny. But considering I already got Growlithe, I didn't want to go for another shiny Growlithe. I wanted to go for another unique shiny because that's part of the rules. So instead, I aimed to go for Drowsy, a Pokemon I have never used, but it's a strong psychic type and psychic types are great in Kanto and it's very prominent on this route. But that didn't come easy. Looking back on this challenge, this was easily the longest shiny hunt I had, clocking in at maybe around 8 hours of just waiting, waiting for a Pokemon to sparkle. But I'm doing this for you guys, and I had to sit through a very long time of just standing around the game, just waiting for a Pokemon to pop up, and, well, I got this instead. There you go. You happy now? Jeez, I gave you dumb shiny Pidgey, but you're so annoying. Shiny Pidgey's not too bad, see? You can evolve that into a nice Pokemon. Okay, cool. That would have been hilarious if it ran. Just call it fried chicken. It deserved it. It was a pain to get. So after calling my shiny Pidgey deep fried, I had a massive issue. Three of my Pokemon were weak to rock and one Pokemon was not very effective against rock, which is why I did not want Pidgey. I then went to do the SSN side shenanigans and this is where I realized that my team was really struggling level wise and species wise. Two of my Pokemon were weak to the next gym and one of those Pokemon were my highest level in Butterfree. So I had no idea what to do, but there was one idea I had. Earlier in Cerulean City, you get given the Dig TM, which is going to be instrumental when fighting Lieutenant Surge, because not only can Growlithe learn it, Raticate can learn it. I got cut, then attempted to fight Lieutenant Surge and the Electric Gym. These battles were hard because my team was not equipped to fight Electric types, however, I was able to make my way through the trainers, get rid of the gates on my first try, and then challenge the Electric type Gym Leader, Lieutenant Surge. And once again, somehow I managed to win on my first try, maybe because I just spent sleep powder but my Pokemon such as Raticate were actually able to deal a hefty amount of damage. This game has actually made me have a fond appreciation for Raticate. I love Olive because of course it's a shiny in a shiny only playthrough but this Raticate is surprisingly really strong and when it has moves like Super Fang and Headbutt really early on it can pack a pretty good punch. I was able to gain my third gym badge and this is where the playthrough truly changed. Kanto has a lot of freedom at this point. You go to Celadon City to get the Saffron City to get the Lavender Town to get the Fuchsia City and it kind of feels like a whole circle where you could really do whatever you please in this region. Because I want to have a shiny only team and I really desperately need the levels and especially the money, I did not challenge a gym leader for like the next 10 hours of this playthrough. My Pokemon needed grinding, I needed better moves and I also needed more shiny Pokemon and I wanted to revisit a shiny hunt I did earlier for Drowsy, this time actually doing a catch combo. After exploring a bit of the Kanto region due to the mass amount of freedom in this game, I went to go for Drowsy and started my catch combo. After the terrible Pidgey hunt, Drowsy only took like an hour to show up and this was a really cool shiny to get. I have literally never had a shiny Drowsy in my party and I'm very excited to use this psychic type Pokemon. Uh, let's name it something great. Call it Sal Salamella. <laughs> That's the name. And it's pink, so it's not cooked well, so Salamella. I'll go get lost now. After naming my drowsy name of the year, this is where I had to really open up the Kanto region. So I had to go to Celadon City to begin the Lavender Town side quest to get the Sylph Scope to get Mount Fuji to wake up the Snorlax, and then I can actually explore the region and get my final shiny team member, and maybe one more, who knows. This area is a lot of backtracking, so there's not really much to discuss here, 
but there is one thing to disclaim. My team was still incredibly underleveled, and I didn't even have really a fully evolved Pokemon apart from Raticate and Butterfree. So when I was facing Giovanni, I lost the first time. I then bit the bullet and I used some of the candies to level up and strengthen my Pokemon. Is this cheating? Sort of. But my team is so weak right now that I just don't care. I defeated Giovanni, headed back to Lavender Town, uncovered that Marowak was the ghost of the Pokemon Tower, found Mount Fuji, and then I was finally able to explore. Considering Erika's gym is around the level 30s, and then there's a massive jump in levels in this game, and just the Kanto region in general, I needed to find my final shiny team member, and I decided to go to Mount Moon for this one, because there's a ton of Pokemon that can resist rock-type moves. I figured some of these Pokemon are cool, like of course Charmander, Rhyhorn, Machop, Onyx, Kangaskhan, yeah, I hunted for like 30 minutes and I got bored. <laughs> I then went back to Viridian Forest to catch Combo Caterpie just to have an idea of what Pokemon I wanted to hunt it for next and to get a 31 catch Combo really easily. And then, well, I'll just show you. I got a Shiny Caterpie on the 30th catch Combo. So, yeah. <laughs> now you might be thinking, this is the 6th Shiny Pokemon, we're done with the Shiny hunting, right? Well if you listen carefully, I said 6 unique Shiny Pokemon, so having a repeat Shiny doesn't count. But it's cool that I found it. I then woke up the sleeping Snorlax, ran from it, and moved on. And then I lost a random trainer battle. Yep, it actually happened, my team is too weak, too underleveled, and... Yeah, this kind of sucked. <laughs> Tired of having a weak team, I decided to really level up my Pokemon and evolve them to their final forms before moving on with the challenge. You saw Drowsy evolving into a Hypno, Deep Fright evolved into a Golden Pidgeot, and then I finally used my Firestone on my Growlithe. The reason I didn't involve my Growlithe earlier was because I wanted my Arcanine to have a really strong moveset with Outrage, Play Rough, Flamethrower, and Crunch. And then I rode on my loyal Russell and it was beautiful. I journeyed to Fuchsia where I was finally able to get the ability to Surf. I received the gold teeth and made my way to the water routes. This is where I knew I wanted my final shiny Pokemon to be a water type. I'm really struggling against rock types and especially ground types. I feel like I just need that water type on my team. I decided to shiny hunt Slowpoke, which might sound like a bad idea because Slowpoke has a non-existent shiny, but Slowbro's shiny is awesome. I went to Seafoam Islands and started to catch combo Slowpoke, which was a huge mistake because Slowpoke broke out of so many Great Bulls. I'm I'm pretty sure I had a hundred Great Bulls. I was down to 40 by the end of the catch combo. Just imagine how much Slowpoke ran from me. But the worst part of this hunt was actually just standing around waiting for a shiny to pop up. I was convinced that there were so many times that I saw shiny Slowpoke, but it's because of these glistering on the floors and also shiny Slowpoke doesn't really change that much. So I was just standing there fooled so many times thinking I found the shiny when I didn't. Another seven hours was gone. I headed back to Fuchsia to get the strong push ability and then I went back to Celadon City to face Erica because it came to my attention that I'm struggling way too much with these normal laws. I need super laws and I also need to progress through the game because my Pokemon got over leveled from catching all those Slowpoke. I said hi to Erica, annihilated her, earned my next badge and then I was able to get super laws but I didn't just stop there. I then ran into a bit of a problem. I couldn't actually access the Fuchsia City gym because I didn't capture 50 species of Pokemon, I caught 34. But because I had to catch combo for Slowpoke, I can't access that gym until very much later, so I just went to face Sabrina. It then came to my attention I needed to do Silphco before I actually battled the Saffron City gym. I made Blue feel like a huge baby, and then I went to face Giovanni. He turned out to be an absolute pushover, and I got the Master Ball. Then I entered Sabrina's beautiful gym where I eventually battled Sabrina, and yeah, I won. I'm, I'm over leveled, I can't help it, those Slowpoke, it's their fault. I then traveled to Cinnabar Island, entered the Pokemon Mansion, got the key to Blaine's gym, and then I battled Blaine. I'm just blazing through these gym leaders, pun intended. My Pokemon was still really reasonably over leveled, but Blaine did prove a tiny bit of a challenge. I mean, he got a few hits in, but eventually, of course, I was able to beat him and earn actually my sixth gym badge. So at this point, I've access to max lords, which are going to be 10 times more helpful than regular lords. And since I can't actually go back and fight Koga before completing my catch combo, I'm forced to shiny hunt Slowpoke right here, right now. One thing I couldn't do before was actually go deeper into Seafoam Islands, where I don't know if there's more Slowpoke spawns or just spawns in general in the area, but it was definitely easier than just standing in one place because now that I have max laws, I can actually run around pretty easily. In just about half an hour, I acquired my final shiny. Yep, 
You know, even though it's not Slowpoke, I'm actually really happy I got Squirtle because A, it's a starter, and B, it's not a repeat psychic type with Hypno, so yeah, this is actually a really, really nice shiny. I caught the Squirtle, named it Softshell, then added it to my team. Oh my goodness, look at him go! Oh, I love him so much already. <laughs> because I got Squirtle, that was the final shiny Pokemon I truly needed for this challenge. As long as I had six unique shiny Pokemon, I'm able to beat this challenge, so I'm finally able to progress and finally beat the game. I had to go and register 50 species of Pokemon in order to face Koga. It was very easy. My Squirtle evolved in a War Turtle, and then finally Blastoise. I went to go find some TMs and moves to teach Softshell, and then I was ready to face Koga. The only real noteworthy thing about Koga's gym was that this was Softshell's first few battles, and it proved to be a pretty formidable Pokemon. I mean, look, it's still underleveled compared to the rest of my team. My team is edging level 60, but you know what? Softshell can make it. He's doing all right. I got Koga's badge, and then then I had a realization. I kind of forgot that Mega Evolution was in this game. We haven't had it for years, so I just assumed that they didn't have it, and I haven't played these games in forever. But with that said, Softshell can Mega Evolve, which means getting Squirtle might not have been such a bad choice because I can have a shiny Mega Pokemon on my shiny team. And so the first trainer in the Viridian Gym, I Mega Evolved Blastoise to become the spectacular shiny Mega Blastoise. After that awesomeness, I finally made it to Giovanni, where of course I annihilated him with my overlevel team, and I earned my Eighth gym badge. So now the only things left to do in this game is to battle time, head to Victory Road, and finally challenge the Pokemon League. After a little bit of preparations, I was ready. I brought my first shiny Pokemon, Butterfree, and five other amazing shiny Pokemon to the first Elite Four member, Lorelei. To be honest, Lorelei is one of my favorite Elite Four members, maybe because she is the first one you ever face, but her Ice type team just, for some reason, I think it captures like a nice side of the Elite Four. But there wasn't really anything interesting about about this battle, I kind of swept her. I mean, my Pokemon are still reasonably overleveled. I went to Bruno, kind of did the exact same thing. Mega Evolved Blastoise destroyed his team, and then Agatha. I actually had a really cool idea by having Raticate using Sucker Punch, and I taught it Sword Stance earlier to just sweep her team. Honestly, Olive has actually been pulling through on this challenge. Lance, on the other hand, was pretty tough. Of course, he's a Dragon Tamer, but doesn't actually really use any Dragon-type Pokemon apart from Dragonite currently, and his team was surprisingly a little bit more difficult than the other Elite Four. Or, I guess, to be expected, he is the final one. I think I lost about maybe two or three Pokemon to him before I could actually defeat him. Of course, Mega Blastoise pulled through. And of course, a famous tradition of Pokemon, the Champion. Now look, rather than focusing on the Champion battle, because to be honest, this one is one of the easier ones, barring the Mega Pidgeot that can flinch, this challenge was a lot of fun and really difficult to do. I think as a whole, this challenge may have taken almost 30 hours to complete, and considering my video beforehand took 12 hours, this was a lot of endurance tested for me. I know I'm not the biggest person ever, I don't want to be like that, because that's the wrong mentality when making video content like this. I just wanted to make this video so people could have fun watching watching it because people did want to see more videos like that. This is my childhood, I'm always going to go back and play Pokemon, it's just a thing I absolutely love and I really did enjoy this challenge, it just took a bit of time. My team ultimately was really cool, I really loved using a lot of these Pokemon like Hypno, Mega Blastoise, even Eradicate, and overall, and overall I'm pretty satisfied with how this video turned out. I just spent almost half a day editing this video just to get it out on time so you guys didn't have to wait too long.